The, uh, yeah, so I'm going to talk about my cancer IQ. Now, I don't really need to talk at length about it because I've only been given five minutes. And uh, also, uh, there's a booth you may, may or may not have noticed over there with the exact same title. So instead of me talking about it at length, you can go over and check it out yourself. This is more of an FYI for you because this is a... a I, I spent so much time uh, working on my survivorship thing because I, I can't remember what slides I put up here. So if I don't talk to the slides, that's why. I, too, have no... I. Uh, have no financial um, gains to be made from my cancer IQ. Um, so yeah, this is a public facing uh, assessment tool that, that is free. You can go on, so your patients can go online and this is why you need to know about it. Because your patients can go online and they will be, they will, uh, be able to document, this is what they'll see. Um, so they can look for, they can look at what their risk assessment score is for, for each of these cancers and, these, and this will be added to in years to come. So at present, we obviously have targeted the three uh, cancers that have screening programs associated with them and also um, the cancer that we could probably uh, near eradicate if we could get people into the top, into, scared enough into quit smoking. Um, so basically, uh, this is what your home page will look like. So when you open it up, uh, it'll ask you if, which one you want to do. You just press on the button and it carries on. <coughs> And this is what eventually you will see. So what will happen or what your patient will get, and they can get this emailed them to themselves and they can get it uh, printed out. By show of hands, has anyone seen one of these come across? Uh, has anyone brought this into the office? Oh, yay. So two people have seen one. Good. So what I like about it is that it's, um, what it will do is tell the patient that you are either at um, average risk whether you're at lower than average risk or you're at higher than average risk. And it doesn't just stop there. It then tells them, These, this is what you're doing right. This is why you're at low risk. Or it'll say, this is why you're at high risk and this is what you can do about it. And then it says, and this is why you need to know, go talk to your primary care practitioner about it. Print this off and take it in. So it's wise that you know about it and maybe go through it. I had my dad and mom go through it. And I should warn, you should always warn your female uh, patients um, not to maybe not to have do the cervical one with their with their significant other present because fortunately my mom only dated my dad and his twin brother so there was nothing to hide but she didn't have her she didn't have her glasses on and my dad was reading the questions and it could have got very dangerous if, if she'd been a loose woman but anyway um, so the uh, at least what she told him she's at low risk um, so basically it, it will send you back in but there are some things um, and again, it just tells you, and this is more going through it, it does show you the progress bar. It does, uh, when you ask a question, sometimes there are things that, like it asks for your height and your weight, and I know I myself, I work in cancer care, and I was like, why is it asking me why, how tall I am? So it'll just give you a brief overview as to why that may or may not be pertinent. Hopefully if they're asking it, it is pertinent. Um, and then what I like about this, and this is again what the summary of details is, so again it tells you, it says that you're lower than average risk, it never says that you're, I like that it doesn't say that you're low risk, it says that you're lower than average, so you still have an average risk, and it does tell them that in the documentation. Um, and then it tells you what you're doing right, what you could improve upon, and then uh, what opportunity the, opportunities there are to further decrease your risk. So talk to your family doctor, in this case it would be about um, regular average risk screening. Um, the uh, what I do like about it and what I always tell primary care is um, we always we're asked as in our job as RPCLs we're asked to help increase your screening rates do whatever we can to help you increase your screening rates let's get the screening rates up there but frankly you guys do a great job so when the patients actually get into your office they are being screened but the problem is is that not everybody comes to your office my husband has only been to the office to ask for a vasectomy that's it he, the doctor's never seen him again she's rolling in the dough I'm sure as a result of it but that's why he's, she's getting clawed back um, but anyway the um, the fact of the matter is this is something I think that would help get people into your office and I'm always looking for opportunities what is there that we can get people into your offices because you do a great job when they're there so hopefully this will get them motivated enough to, uh, to come into the uh, office and talk to you. The other, and again, it's over there, so check it out. Um, the other thing, and I would suggest you check it out, because there are some things that, uh, when I first read this and looked over it, I had became involved in creating these um, CME modules uh, that we can, that we as RPCLs have available that we can come and talk to you in your office about that are main pro accredited. And I know that they are going to be incorporated into the e-learning tool that you all heard about on the OMA blast that we sent out. And I'm sure you've all read and not deleted. Um, 
the uh, so basically we do have a a, um, a presentation that we could do and uh, and talk to you about what you might see. And the reason I I decided that we should do this is because my uh, Cancer Care Ontario had come up with this, and then it rolled out, and then it says all these things: talk to your family doctor. Well, would any of you know that in a lower um, in an average risk of women, it is, it is saying talk to your doctor about potentially having tamoxifen for for in the next little while to decrease your risk further? And I was like. I would not know that. I do cancer care and I wouldn't be suggesting that people take tamoxifen. So there are some things that maybe you need to have the heads up on before you get bowled over when someone brings it into your office. So we, we'd be more than happy to come to your office. All you have to do is contact your local RPCL who the people that are here from Cambridge, I know most of you and you have my emails and I'm sure that Jan would be happy to come out and see the rest of you anywhere around the Lynn 3. And I think that's it for me. <laughs>